to the air bowling in tonight's championship ladder finals. And on top of the qualifying rounds is Wendy McPherson Papano. She leads in virtually every category on tour this year. A victory tonight will lock up, virtually lock up, the Bowler of the Year honors. Runner-up in that event last year, the runner-up in the Bowler of the Year title is Anne-Marie Dugan. She is yet to win an individual event in 1996. That might happen for her tonight. And two weeks ago, Lisa Wagner was runner-up in an event which would have marked her 31st victory on tour more than any athlete in the history of the sport. Number 31 might come tonight. And now to meet the bowlers who will be meeting each other in match number one, let's go to the lanes and here's Jan Schmidt. Thanks, John. First, let's talk to our number five seed, Kim Adler. Kim, you made a charge again last night in the last round of match play. You seem to be doing that a lot lately. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I've narrowed my choices down for equipment and I have one game plan, and that's what's been happening the last round of match play. For tonight, though, I have just a couple balls. So you have been able to narrow it down? Yes. Um, they're playing pretty similar as during the tournament for me, so I have a couple balls to work with. Thanks a lot, Kim. Good luck to you. Okay, now let's talk to our number four seed, Dee Dee Davidson. Dee Dee, you actually came from the other end of the spectrum. You were one, two, and three throughout match play. In the last round, lane conditions changed a little. You started to struggle. You had to scramble. Now, what are they like for you tonight out there? Basically, they're the same as they were in the morning blocks. Um, I've got a nice reaction, and I've got... Uh, pretty much any ball that I need if I'm having trouble what to go to next so it should be interesting and I'm ready to go great thanks a lot Dee Dee and good luck also well you've met them both you pick your favorite back to you John thanks a lot Jan the athletes are meeting for the traditional handshake Davidson by the nature of her fourth place qualifying is elected to allow Kim Adler to start out the match lanes 51 and 52 Adler opens us up. Out of Palm Bay, Florida, she travels a lot. Her husband, Tommy, is with her. 29-year-old joined the tour in 1991, the year that she won Rookie of the Year. And the first shot of the match is a strike. Great opening shot for Kim. I tell you, I watched her in practice, John, and I really didn't think she had too much out there. She did go through a lot of balls, played all different areas of the lane. So according to what she says, though, she has found it and narrowed it down. Davidson, the only left-hander to make the championship round finals today. Opening up on lane 52. Hmm. Coming a little high, but it has been a few minutes since they, they were able to throw their last shot. Could have been a little slow on that shot. Leaving the 247 and hailing, as you noticed, from the state of Florida, loves the Miami Dolphins. Sometimes wears them on jewelry. You might see one around her neck. She does that for, for good luck. And she gets a spare in the first. This is a look at the shot she just made. She's setting it down out about the fifth board. All the way down the lane, making a late break. A lot of fresh back end down there. You have to realize there's one left-hander, four right-handers. So Dee Dee's the only one throwing balls out there. The carry down's going to take a little longer on the left side of the lane. And she seems to have found the spot to follow her spare with a strike. Adler back up at it. Two titles in her career. 204.75 her average, but a 219 on the TV pair is one of the high average overall. Large field competing here in Canton, Michigan this year. 69 athletes participating. And it actually did take, Kim was fifth, it actually took a 204.75 to make the television show. In 1993, Kim was the Player of the Year runner-up. Has had, in her opinion, a somewhat disappointing 1996. Her best finish, like third this year in the Ladies and Legends matchup. And the strike that in the happened for her in the first is her husband Tommy watches on. Not able to repeat over on 52. Kim's just going to try and get settled in, and as she said, boy, she has been just 
dynamic in that last round of match play, but she's had trouble carrying that over to the television show. And, and I thought it was maybe focused, but she told me, no, it's really being able to narrow down balls and get to the right equipment quick enough. She pick ups, picks up the spare in the second frame. Bowlers even in match number one here at Super Bowl, just outside of Detroit. Well, she seems to have figured out lane 51, doesn't she, Jim? Right now she has, and she's going to have to finish, though, on lane 52. So, but Dee Dee made that choice because Dee Dee was a higher qualifier. Maybe she did it for a reason. May come back to haunt her. Dee Dee herself, four titles on the Pro Tour. Most recently, the 1993 U.S. Open. She's won two of the three majors. And her goal is to win the third, to get that hat trick. Bang! Two strikes in a row. Dee Dee's looking good. Dee Dee appeared to have a nice shot in practice, and here's how she's doing it. She starts way over to the left, ball about waist high. Five-step approach, a real loose free arm swing. Way back over her head in the back swing. Look at the knee bend, way down low. Great result. She's worked hard at staying solid at the line. Dee Dee used to fall off a lot more. Now you very rarely see her put that other foot down. That second strike gave her a 10-pin lead. Puts another one on the board. That's a turkey. So Dee Dee Davidson strikes three times in a row in match number one against Kim Adler. Competition continues in this Lady of a Night Classic. Kent, Michigan. Stay with us. Welcome back. Jan Schmidt alongside me. I'm John Neighbor as we cover the Lady Ebonite Classic Championship Round Finals. Match number one. Kim Adler trailing by 20. Working on a strike. Make that two strikes. Kim is playing a different area of the lane than she played most of the week. She's moved farther out around the first arrow. She played there for five games, she said, out of the 32, and she got in trouble playing there, so moved in each round. She tried to play out there and have to move, but in practice, I watched her trying to play in, and she really did not have anything at all. That double in the fourth pulls her to within 10. Winning twice as many as she lost in match play. Very tough competitor. Oh, and this is the head pin, and I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> That's actually a washout, the head pin standing. That's it. Five count on a double could hurt her. That left lane, there might be a little bit hang out, out there. That happened on a lot of pairs across the house. Players really had to move quick this week. You could play the first arrow, then you might be playing the fourth arrow, the next pair, because there was not a consistent shot throughout the house. Mm. As an equalizer, does that l allow less capable athletes making uh, higher caching? If it's a, if it's a random or uh, an apparently random condition on the lanes, who does that help? I would say your, your more consistent bowlers that can stay out of trouble, your spare shooters generally, uh, who can pick up all the spares because they're more important in a week like this when scores are lower. Uh, Anne-Marie uh, was able to, able to overpower the lanes uh, on the right. She was able to open up the lanes. A lot of the players couldn't. Dee Dee was able to do that on the left. Boy, I saw two messengers heading to, towards the seven. No such luck. Dee Dee, one of the more extroverted players on tour, likes to sing in the lounge after hours. And she has an excellent voice. She could also pursue a singing career. She's got the personality for it, doesn't she? So she stays clean through five. Interesting ball there. You can actually see the weight block inside of it. 
For those of you who don't know what the interior looks like of a bowling ball, you can see it go down the lane when Down's you throw it. That's your chance, that's right. The 28 pin lead halfway through the match. Definitely way out there. Good for another strike, her fourth in six frames. And the pressure coming back squarely on Kamadler. 247, her high game. As you said, sometimes a difficult house. 155 below. She's found that niche. And we're on 52. She's a nice shot on that lane now from playing out there. Knees are slightly bent. She has a five-step approach, very quick feet, a low backswing, only about waist high. Real compact, head is steady all the way through. Look at the long slide, good knee bend, strong finish position. Look at the follow through, never stops it. This is what I talked about earlier in the open, how Kim makes her move in the last round of match play. You can see going into the last block, that's the position she was in in these tournaments this fall, 18th, 14th, 12th. Over on the right is where she actually finished the event. So in all but one, she moved up in that last round. Two strikes in a row brings her ever closer to Dee Dee Davidson in the seventh frame. So we'll take a short break as she sits down. Dee Dee will be up when we return. Match number one continues here at the Lady Ebonite Classic in Canton, Michigan. Stick around. Welcome back. Dee Dee Davidson leading by just under 20 pins, working on a strike seventh frame. She steps up. Dee Dee finishing fourth and qualifying. Turns 30 next week. They are definitely falling for the lady out of Florida. Dieters, they call her. Joined the tour in 1985. That was a big break for Dee Dee, John. That came up almost dead on the nose and just split the pins. That Only gave her a 28 pin lead right there. That's right. Only one open so far out of both bowlers came in the fifth frame. often happens, you get a break and they take it right back. <laughs> Through a good shot, it doesn't carry. Dee Dee's been struggling. She said that she's actually nervous a little bit on TV. There you can see it. The weight that block? Weight, yeah, the weight block inside the ball. And it actually almost kind of looks like a flying saucer there. Every, many balls now have all different shapes of weight blocks inside. Can't really normally see them unless you cut the ball open. Oh, well, she's smiling. She's pretty happy here. So Adler now trailing 213 average this year for her. And that's pretty good. The averages were really high earlier in the year, but they've come down quite a bit. 215.49 leading. Big strike for Adler. She and her husband Tommy are already looking ahead to raising a family, but that doesn't necessarily mean they plan to leave the tour. Well, we're going to wait for the tour schedule for the next couple of years, and uh, around that we're going to plan on having children out here on the road with us in our motor home, and my husband Tommy is going to be the uh, house-sitting dad at home, and we're hopefully going to homeschool on the road and give the children a lot of on-the-road experience. That's nice for mom to be with her kids, too. I don't know, I can't even imagine how you could possibly do it without. And you're right, John. That's about the only way you could. It's so difficult for the players that have children. Something the men on tour don't have to worry about, I guess. Well, they also they should have worry kids, about it. John. Yeah, right. True. They should be concerned yeah. about those issues. It's down to just a seven-pin match now. Kim has really come back. String of four for Adler. All the way through the foundation frame. Working on a spare. 
Oh, the same movement we've seen before. John, that was huge because now she cannot shut out Kim Adler. Kim's going to be able to step up and win this match, no matter what Dee Dee does. What a turnaround. 28-pin lead, now it's going to go off the sheet. Okay, a spare in the foundation frame means a possible 237 if she goes off the sheet. A six-pin lead. If she strikes out, she's going to force Kim to double. Dee Dee, your mom and dad are there watching. She wanted to say hello, Lori and Dave Davidson. They're pulling for her right now. That seven has been giving her more trouble tonight. That was a great shot. The four pin flew around the seven. A couple of the others that laid down in the channel, but watch this one. She's setting it down, same place, around five, six board, coming in strong. See, that four pin just flew. She knows she made a good shot. Sometimes it works that way. And a frustration. She... Oh. oh, my. Big mistake. Wow. She may have just given it away. Now, Adler did leave an open in the fifth. The mark here guarantees the win. I kept waiting for that ball to turn. It looks so like it's she. going to, yeah. Okay. John, I think that was, Kim said to me last night that she really wanted to make this show. She needed to make up for Pittsburgh. She needed a mark to win. She washed out. Notice how she sent that ball toward the head pin. She wanted to make sure that she got it to the head pin because that's almost the only way you're going to strike. I always like Kim's look of confidence and concentration. I don't care if it's a nine pin, when you need a mark to win, there's pressure there. than she needed enough to advance so the score 218 to 215 dd davidson sits down with 2800 dollars is the fifth place prize we'll be back with match number two as kim adler advances to meet the winningest bowler in the history of the sport rocket wagner in the wings stick around We're back at the Super Bowl in Kent, Michigan for more of the Lady Ebonite Classic. Match number two now underway on the left of your screen. Lisa Wagner, 30 LPBT titles in her career, allowing or choosing to allow Kim Adler to go first. And just before we return, Kim takes a little kiss from her husband, Tommy, sitting right behind her, and she's ready to do it again. This is where she started match number one. We take a look at her breakdown for that first match. Pretty even, four and three strikes. She did have the one open on the left lane. Does it again. Looks like she settled in to an in-between area on the lane. Not real deep inside, not too far out. She's more around the second arrow. Bradenton, Florida. Hometown for the 35-year-old. Called the bowler of the 80s. Perhaps some of the younger bowlers might have been uh, surprised, but Lisa has not given up her shot at victories. Comes back and wins a major this year. Oh, 
pulled that ball way left. She stands really straight here. Ball's about chest high. She has a four-step approach. Really long steps. High back swing over her head. Look at the long flowing arm swing, though. Nice follow through. Lisa usually plays very direct, almost points the ball. She definitely pointed that one just a little too far. 205 average. This is her fifth TV appearance this year. Maybe she wants to be bowler of the 90s as well. <laughs> That'd be pretty impressive. You know, I asked her that question last night, if she was thinking about bowler of the 90s. She said it really didn't matter to her. She's in it for the money. She's a journeyman. She's a working woman. So Adler opens with a strike, and uh, Wagner comes back with two. So the pressure is back on. Punch and counter punch. Adler winning the first match by three pins over Dee Dee Davidson. John Naper and Jan Schmidt here at Super Bowl in Canton, Michigan. For more of match number two in this championship ladder finals. The Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour and the Lady Ebonite Classic. Watching four consecutive strikes by these two bowlers in match number two. Kim appears to be lined in. She's setting this ball down up around the eighth board. She actually sent that one out to five. Came back really strong for her. That's determination. In match play, Adler defeated the Rocket. And when the TV lights are burning, she's still good. And she is farther in on the left lane. She didn't send that ball as far right. Wagner traveling on tour in the Natasca mobile home with her fiance, Brian Billers. 219.5 is the highest TV pair average of these five finalists. Lisa was the first woman in bowling history to earn over $100,000 of prize money in a single year. She gets another strike. She's also a lover of animals, carries a menagerie with her on tour. We asked her why. It's a proven fact that people that have pets are healthier and happier. Uh, physically, they're much better off, mentally better off. They bring so much enjoyment, I guess, and a lot of peace to people's lives. And uh, I encourage everybody, go down to the SPCA, Humane Society, take a look, adopt a pet. Not only does she talk the talk, she walks the walk. Yes, she does, John. She has four ferrets, uh, Princess, Gracie, Boots, and Lexi, and also Sam, the dog. Sam was wearing a little Halloween costume today, running around as Sam the Super Dog. Oh, my goodness. The ball just Boy. rolling up a little too soon. Driving high, leaving the 4-9. It's a bad break. We did see a few of these this week. Brian Billard, Lisa's fiance. birthday, Brian. Coincidentally. She's going to go for this. Shooting it from the middle of the lane. She had to go for it, though. No question about it. Right. Now, she loses two pins by doing that because she was on a strike. Had she taken one pin, she actually would gain one into a frame. So it would be two pins. But... With Kim lined up on a three-bagger, she felt she had to go for the spare. Is that normal? Most bowlers think they can pick up the, the splits during TV pair? I, TV I, would, I would say for the most part, a, a split like a 4-9, a 5-7, those splits, they would go for it because if, if you make one, it makes up a lot. There's a lot at stake. But there's certain splits, a 4-6, a 4-6-7, 10, that they wouldn't even try for. So Adler finished third, her best finish at the Three Rivers Open a few weeks back. Puts four in a row in that open by Wagner in the fourth. Allows Adler to pull ahead by 26 pins. And it should be noted that in match number one, Adler was trailing by 28 and still came back to win. 
Right. Kim, Kim's inserting a piece of tape here. She had picked the ball up and then set it back down. It felt loose. You might wonder why in between she needs tape. She's actually using two different bowling balls. Not only is she playing farther left on the left lane, but she's using different equipment. So when she picked it up after throwing her first shot, uh, it felt a little bit different than the ball she just threw, so she added some tape. A lot of poise not to be pressured by the lights and the cameras to just get up and bowl. And obviously a good choice. Five in a row. And that sometimes is difficult to use two balls. For those of you at home that have more than one bowling ball, you realize it's impossible to get them to feel exactly the same. Lisa Wagner out here right now just went to using slugs in all of her balls. So you actually drill into the slug. For those of you that don't know, you drill a hole, a slug is put in, you drill into the slug. That way all the balls have the same feel. Because now with the resin, um, they're actually sometimes get a little tacky when they get hot. A urethane ball such as Lisa's throwing, is that a non-resin is actually slippery inside. So it's difficult to go back and forth. But with the slug, she said it's helped her tremendously. A good tip from Lisa Wagner for those of you at home. There you go. Didn't help her get a strike in this frame. Hidden Wood, lane 52. Those are the slugs you were talking about, Jan. Mm -hmm. Here's her grips in the fingers. You can't really... There you go. You can see the white just a little bit. You saw it by her thumb. That's the slug that's in the ball. So bouncing back after the open in the fourth, Wagner takes a spare in the fifth, trailing by over 30 pins. I might mention, in regards to those slugs, if anyone's at home aspiring to be a professional, use those and don't let them plug your balls because plugs are not legal out here. Hmm. See, four of our five finalists were exempt during early play. They uh, got an automatic buy into the uh, match play competition. And sitting at the top of the ladder, Wendy McPherson Papanos was very consistent. You saw Kim there. She went 17th, 16th, 9th, and then 5th. So she did make the jump that last day. This is how Kim made her shot on the right lane the last time. She's setting it down about the 8th board, going out to about the 5th board. This is the left lane. She's sliding farther left, setting it down about at 15, going right to about the 10th or 11th board. There's the right lane. You would call that an outside shot. And there's the left lane. Not near, she's not getting nearly as far out, and it's a different bowling ball. Okay, so in the sixth frame, you just saw the end result. Leaves a pin after a string of five. I think Kim would rather have us use that replay we just <laughs> showed right. them. Show the one where they all fall down, please. Adler, the seventh woman to bowl back-to-back -back sanctioned 300s. John, she actually got injured when she did that. She jumped up. Got so excited when she did it, she jumped up, came down, hurt her ankle. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can certainly understand the jumping part. It's the landing part that I don't understand. I think Kim's taking a re-rack here. Feels the pins are off spot or wants a little time, one or the other. She's allowed two during this match, two during television. During the week, we're allowed five re-racks per game. Per game? Yes. Nine okay. perfect games for Adler in her career. As good as she's been, I'm surprised she's only won two titles in her career, but tonight may be number three. And she wasn't happy with that shot. It's kind of, it's hard when trying to pay, play a little more direct on one lane, open up another lane, your th different arm swing, different ball feel. It's not easy what she's doing, although many of the professionals do this on a regular basis. Leading by 34. Do you think she'll ever play it safe with a 34-pin lead? I guess she no. overcame a 29-pin lead, but she'll pick up a spare here in frame number seven. We'll come back with more action here in match number two at the Lady of a Night Classic at the Super Bowl in Cannes, Michigan. Stay with us. 
Welcome back to more of the Lady Ebonite Classic match number two. Adler stringing five in a row, two spares and a strike in the eighth. Is now in the foundation frame, enjoying a comfortable lead. And Jan, she looks like she's getting stronger mentally, too. She does. Watch those eyes as she's going up the ball. She got past that bug that's been biting her in the first match on TV, and she looks really tough. Lisa Wagner with an open in the fourth. Trailing by 34 pins. Better do something soon because she's running out of time. Didn't it? Yeah, that was a nice shot when she put it down. It's good release. It, it looks like she hasn't quite been aggressive with her releases on a lot of her shots. I can never remember Wagner being accused of being tentative. Mm, well, it could just be not a real good feel. It, it's awfully chilly in here, and sometimes it's hard to hang on to a bowling ball when it's cold like that. chilly outside also I might add which is probably why it's a little cooler in here today her best finish a victory at the WIBC Queens this year that marked her 30th title I don't believe any other woman's won more than 24 titles on tour maybe it's 25 but even so nothing to be embarrassed about here she's looking very strong in the 10th frame somehow I doubt if she'll have enough pins to advance, but still. Good showing. I saw her letting out a deep breath as she came back. Lisa is very into breathing techniques as far as calming nerves. She's, uh, she said that works very well for her and uses it quite often. She also talks about a key word or phrase she mutters to herself every week. She said this week or this day it's going to be get it rolling early. What does that mean to you? She wants to set the ball early and get, have it start to rotate early. Has she done it? The last few shots. See how early the ball, for her that's a very early roll. The shots that went too long, she didn't get them into an early roll. And then they, the ball doesn't break soon enough. And she is using non-resin as I mentioned, so it doesn't have the strong back end reaction. The hook has to be early. You can see it right here. She sets it down around the fourth, third board. It's gonna start to hook, oh, not even halfway down the lane. Uh, with the resin equipment, and you want to project it farther down the lane, and and it looks hooks a lot harder in the back end. Lisa also throws very hard, which makes the ball skid down the lane quite a bit. So for her, it's important with this equipment to get an early roll. Well, good for her. She takes it off the sheet for a total of 234. So Adder just needs nine pins in two shots. That would be nine on this ball because she's working on a double. So if she were to get a bad count, she would need to spare it then. Well, isn't this interesting? She's looking at the scoreboard over here. If she only takes two, she would lose by a pin. That's what I was saying. Working on a double, it, it's hard to... Uh, she needs them all. She needs to make them all spare. She needs it. Wow. This is a difficult spare. Two matches in a row where the last ball takes a remarkable lead away. She needs to get the ball to the right of the three pin on this shot, John. She has to have it driving hard enough to take out the nine, but also has to deflect enough to take out the ten, so it has to be a perfect shot. What a great shot. <laughs> that's the most reaction I've seen out of Kim Adler on a television oh. show ever. Boy, that's going to make championship frame, don't you think? Woo, Tommy heaves a sigh of relief as well. <coughs> and so, with that mark, she'll get another toss, but it doesn't matter because she now has more than enough pins necessary to advance. And without it, oh, what a show. So she'll make a, she'll take her prerogative to take that third shot in the 10th, gets them off, 
a big victory for Kim Adler over Lisa Wagner when we return. We'll get to meet the top finishers. $3,200 for the Rocket. A fourth place finish, and Kim Adler gets to bowl again. Welcome back for the third of four matches here at the Lady of the Classic. John Neighbor with Jan Schmidt alongside. And Emery Dugan has chosen to let Kim Adler start. In fact, on all three matches, the higher seed player has elected to let Adler start. You'd think they'd learn by now. Right, but you can see she's had two more strikes on the left lane. She had her open on the left lane, though, but when it's come to needing a mark in the 10th, she's had a little trouble on the right lane, so maybe that's what they're seeing, and they think if she, if she makes a little mistake, it's, it's affecting her more on the right lane. The LPBT president, John Falzone, is here in town this week, probably uh, getting ready for the tour visiting his town next week. We'll be at the home of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. Cherry Bowl. Average on tour last year and was runner-up in the Bowler Player of the Year balloting. As I said at the top of the program, though, has not found a way to win a tournament in 1996, though she's been a perennial candidate. 34 years of age, out of Edmond, Oklahoma. And she was top seed a couple weeks ago in Pittsburgh, lost that tournament. Uh, you mentioned her average. Actually, her average in this tournament was also 215. She out-averaged Wendy, the top seed, by five pins per game. But the match play was so important in this tournament this week. You mentioned John Falzone earlier. Here's John Summer, the chairman of the board of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. And so we have VIPs in abundance. For those of you who ran out and voted today, thank you for joining us this evening. By now, the outcome of that election is well in hand. The outcome of this match is still up in the air. Frame number two, nothing but strikes. Oh, and a dancing four. Good shot, just driving a little hard, not, not getting the trip on the four pin. Kim works with uh, Bill Spigner and Pete Couture also. They're both her coaches. She thanks them for all the help they've given her. quick spare. You met Mark Voigt earlier, his wife Diane sitting next to him as we watch the uh, action continue in match number three. Wonderful hospitality and Diane is greeting everybody with a big sincere smile. It's great to see her, great to be seen by her here in this house. They've been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. $284,000 in change for Adler and that number obviously will go up tonight as third place a uh, minimum $4,000 awaits Adler and a possible $11,000 payout here in Canton, Michigan. Well, that ball struck with authority, didn't it? It sure did, John. She is really making great shots with the exception of a couple here or there. We talked about Anne Marie opening up the lane. She did it all week. She's doing it now. She's sending the ball right more than any of the other players, and she's able to bring it back. You talked about the power and the, and the strength behind her shots. She's actually trying to reduce the amount of turn, trying to stay behind it and get better roll. So, a strike in the third. We had a chance to speak with Anne-Marie earlier and asked how she helps her own career while she's out on tour. Well, for the last... I've been married seven years, and my husband usually is my coach, but instead, this year, I've been doing a lot of my practicing by myself, and I take a video camera down there and videotape myself and then go home and watch it with him. So a lot of the things that I've been working on, I've been trying to do it myself so I can become better at fixing things when I'm on the road by myself. Well, she's fixing to enjoy a 20-pin lead after three frames. Can she string it four together? Oh. She really projected that ball right. Went down the lane a long way before it made its break. A little bit of a half ten there. No half ten. Doesn't count much, does it? <laughs> you don't get the half. 215 or average. Best average in the in the field this week. And a straight shot for the spread. She does flatten out her ball. She's worked on that, so she's much more accurate on spares now. 
point of being able to help yourself out here, John, that's very important. I mean, we have ball reps out here, and we have, they will help coach the players a little bit, but it's hard sometimes to really figure out what you're doing wrong, so if you're able to visualize it because you've used video camera equipment, it helps a lot. Adler, looking very strong. Sean on the right lane again. She's still sending out. She's moved in just a little bit. Only out to about the seventh board. Packed all ten. Of course, bowling continues on ESPN as the Pro Bowlers Tour heads to Greater Harrisburg for the Greater Harrisburg Open. 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific. That's the California people on Wednesday here on ESPN. Three in a row. Not quite. She missed left a target considerably on that shot. But really, most of you at home would think that that should have carried in. It probably normally would have about 99% of the time. So she'll settle for a spare. Kim also flattens the ball at her spares quite a bit. She used to remove her wristband to do that, but the one she's wearing now, she's able to adjust it to straighten her wrist out so she can flatten the ball for the spares. And she cups it a little bit for her first shot. Dugan's TV pair average, much lower than her tournament average this week. Oh. There's six pins left standing without the head pin. We were talking about that earlier. What went wrong there? Let's watch here. It looks like she didn't quite get it as far right. Look, it only got up to about the ninth board. She's been sending it farther right than that. Ball just broke a little bit early. Ooh. If she can pick this up, it'd be tough because she ball has to drive hard enough to take out that nine pin. She went for the count. She gave a good run. That's the same way she would have had to pick it up, but she needed, you know, would have needed it to slide down the lane a little bit farther. Dugan trailing by eight with the open in the fifth. That was really unusual, John, for the ball to go, for it to go through there and only take four pins out. And unable to get back into the striking zone. And that was a Greek church plus one. I don't know it what was. they call that. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't wanna... think that's fair has a name, but you're right. Yeah. Greek church plus the three pin. Well, she'll now to give it another straight shot to pick up the ten pin for a spare in the sixth. The semifinal battle between Anne Marie Dugan and Kim Adler continues as our coverage will too. Stay with us. Welcome back, John Neighbor and Jan Schmidt, as we watch Kim Adler bowling in the sixth, working on a spare, enjoying an eight-pin lead and strikes. That pin count that Anne Marie, the four count, it was on a spare, so that that could prove to be important toward the end of the match. That wasn't a bad shot. No, it wasn't that bad. It just she didn't quite get it down the lane far enough, and it broke a little too early. Uh, normally, I, I mean, you know, Kim missed a little bit left and was able to carry Brooklyn, so you unfortunately sometimes get the breaks and sometimes don't. Dugan led by as much as 20 pins early in this match. Now trailing by eight. Adler. Oh, ringing ten for her. Nice shot, though. She's continuing to hit the pocket. Kim's definitely lined up on both lanes. Remember we were watching her face in the earlier match, showing her grim determination? I'm trying to decide what I see in those eyes now. That squint is, is the powerful focus, but before I saw a little bit of tentativeness. Not enough to deny her a spare in the seven. So Dugan gets back into it after the open in the fifth, spare in the sixth. 
In addition to uh, coaching herself, Amory, and uh, working with Pat, her husband, she also works with Fred Borden on occasion. She said she went out to see him on the way here. So she says thank you, and what they worked on helped a lot. She says Fred has encouraged her to think of herself as bowler of the 90s. That could happen. Let's look at Bob Pike, Amory's father. So right now, Anne-Marie Dugan trailing by eight with a strike in the seventh here at the Lady Ebonite Classic at the Super Bowl in Canton, Michigan. John Amber with Jan Schmidt alongside. The lead has switched back and forth a couple of times. Dugan still needs a little bit more, and Kim Adler starting in the number five position, advanced over Dee Dee Davidson and Lisa Wagner for the opportunity to meet last year's Bowler of the Year runner-up. Dugan working on a strike. No Brooklyn today. I'm not sure what she's doing, if she's sliding her feet or what. I know one of the things Anne-Marie was working on was trying to stay behind the ball more, not come around it as much because she felt it increased her carry and she was able to control the ball better, get it down the lane better. So she's spared each of the last three times she's bowled on that lane. And now Adler comes up, working on a spare herself. Her stare looks like she wants to drill a hole through that head pin. Whatever she's doing, it worked there in the eighth. It didn't look like she missed a little left on this shot, but the ball held pocket. See how she didn't really send it right at all, straight up the boards. No chance for anything to stand. Still an eight-pin lead. Foundation frame, very important. She'll have the upper hand. That was a big break, it's a 2 8 10 2 4 8 10 big leaves we've seen this week. If you watched the show from last week, you saw Carol Giannotti leave it twice, pick it up twice. Uh, she was fortunate to break up the 2-pin and the 10. The ball never turning over, still sliding. Head pin off the wall takes out the 2. Like the 6-pin might have tapped back out, taking the 10. Three spares in a row on that lane for Adler. She'll sit down waiting for her final opportunity. Well, since she didn't strike there, John Ann Marie can step up and shut out Kim Adler. She'll need a strike in the ninth, two strikes in the tenth. And nine pins on her fill ball. You can beat Adler during match play. Ed is in a great position now. She can strike out for 221. Kim Adler can only shoot 219 at this point. Well, no shutout today. She's having trouble with that lane hooking on her. I couldn't tell if there was a look of relief on Adler's face or not. I think she was just looking at the scoreboard. And again, that straight shot. Dad watches implacidly. With good pin count here, Kim is going to again need a mark in the 10th frame. With eight pins here. So, Anne-Marie Dugan breaks 200 by a pin.
and Adler needs a mark. So she's gone high the last two times on this lane when she's needed a mark. I'm talking about in the 10th frame of the last two matches. Let's see if she makes a move. Good shot. That's it. That's all she needed. So from the number five position, Adler moves all the way to the championship match. Technically, not yet, but she just needs good count. Yeah, she really just needs three pins now, John, and two balls. I think that's an easy bet. So Anne-Marie Dugan with a third place finish. No victory for her yet this year. $4,000. And is it three pins? More than enough. So Kim Adler does go up the ladder, go all the way to the championship match. That will be showing right here after we come back with championship frames. Stay with us. Welcome back as the trophy for the Lady Evanite Classic title holder in 1996 is sitting alongside Wendy McPherson Papanos. The top seed elects once again to watch Kim Adler start and finish the championship match. Lane's almost playing identical now for Kim Adler, although she's playing the lanes differently. She's scoring the same on both lanes. But I think what's happening here is they're just electing to put the pressure on Kim at the end. Very, very exciting. Just before the championship match, Kim and her husband, Tommy Adler, were having a little social words. Looks like she's almost consoling him instead of the other way around. She's saying, it's okay, I have it under control. Don't get so worried now. <laughs> it's interesting, a couple of weeks ago we spoke to Kim and she says that my bowling is our future. A way of looking at it as she is currently the breadwinner in that household. Wendy McPherson Papanos begins with a strike. Oh my, we watched Kim trip out of 7-10 and now Wendy trips the 4-7-10. Interestingly, McPherson Papanos, the top seed, lost to all of the TV finalists in the last block, splitting with Anne-Marie Dugan in the position round. 210, her average, as you noted earlier, five pins less than Anne-Marie Dugan. I guess against the other bowlers, she won more than her share of the bonus pins. Nine titles in her career. She's going for the double digits for the 10th win here. She slid that 10 pin a full oh. pin's width apart. Oh. Wow. And the wreck did pick it up. Any other time this pin would have been down. Watch the shot she's playing. Around 15, going out all the way to about 9. Six pin wrap, hits the 10. It doesn't fall, it just slides. Almost over to the 9 spot. <laughs> Amazing, look at her. Oh, I can't believe that, she says. Well, she picks it up for this one. That's pretty amazing. She may rue that day. Interestingly, Kim Adler has uh, a 5-5 five and five record when she's made TV shows from the number 5 position. She's never won a title. No titles from the number 5 seed. Looks like it might be on its way to changing. The four pin up for Adler in the second frame. Nice shot, just not tripping the fourth. Someday Kim wants to visit Alaska. Take her husband and those kids she talked about earlier. Up to the largest state. Right now though, her focus is on the lanes. We have a strike and a spare apiece. I want to take a minute, John. I want to make sure that we get to thank Phil Hain. He was our chiropractor this week and was not able to make it out tonight, but he treated a lot of the ladies, and we definitely appreciate it. And how? 21 pins separating these two when they met in match play. No pins separating them now. Mows them down.
little bit of difference in money here from uh, last year to this year. These are players who increased in money. I think the new format, the top 32, certain exempt players, for instance, Wendy's been exempt for quite some time now. Uh, Jackie and Lisa have been back and forth, but the exempt players are guaranteed a check each week, and we think it's affected some players. Liz Johnson, on the other hand, is a rookie this year, didn't bowl last year, so that increase is over a zero from last year. That's correct. She might break half a million dollars in career earnings, Wendy McPherson Papanos, before this season is over. So it certainly has been a, a banner year for Papanos. She's always been knocking on the door. Her career has been uh, pockmarked with bits of very outstanding bowling, but she says it's just never quite worked out for her. These are some people who are down in money this year. Um, actually, though, they are all seated players, so they've all been guaranteed a check. So to some players, they feel it has not been to their advantage because they think by not being on the lanes during that day of qualifying, it has hurt their match play bowling. Uh, less bowling, not being adapted to the lane conditions as well, knowing how the lanes break down and what balls to go to, things like that. So it has... Some people feel it has hurt them. So the jury is still out on the new bowling format. And McPherson Papanos missing out a strike for the third frame in a row. A little bit light on that one. She uh, had been high the frame before on the right lane. Right now just searching, trying to get lined in. You mentioned Adler has never won from the number five position. Wendy McPherson Papanos did win from the number one position. Oh, and everybody oh, saw that was going to miss. Now, she changed balls to shoot that spare. She went to an on-resin ball that should slide more. So she could go straight at it. She pulled it left. She still rotated it, and it continued to turn. Now, on many of the lanes this week, if you did that, the ball actually backed off, actually faded back because there was a lot... A lot of conditioner in that area, but not as much play on these lanes, not as much carry down on the left side over there, so the ball hooked. Defending champion Anne-Marie Dugan has her sights on another major as the LPBT returns home to the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois for the Hammer Players Championship. Be sure to join Leala Wagner and Jan Schmidt for all the action next Tuesday, 11 p.m. Central Time. Back again as Adler's put two together. And McPherson Papanis left an open in the fourth, so this could be a major leap forward. Ten dances, but does not fall. Shot a little light. Something Kim did this week. She said she had to work on keeping her feet slow this week so she didn't get as much speed. She threw 16-pound equipment. She generally does throw 16-pound. However, in the summer, a couple times in the night blocks, when the lanes were drier, she drilled up a few 15-pound balls so she could get a little more ball speed. She also changed, is changing balls to shoot her spare. Oh. That one looked like it slipped off her hand. And there's an open back again. She wasn't comfortable at the line at all. Timing wasn't right. Ball fell off her hand. Watch her right here. Did she catch her leg? Uh, she slipped maybe. The ball might have actually caught her leg on the way through. Couldn't get a good look at that, did she? No. Looks like, see how she pulled up? Looked like she was slipping. But she rapidly tries to get back into herself as McPherson Papanos comes back to leave the 2-5. And talking about slipping, if you have a look at Wendy's shoes, she's wearing two different shoes. She actually has chosen to wear a different slide sole on her left foot to get more slide this week. Um, tended to be a little more on the tacky side, the approach is not sticky, but just where we'd use our, our more slide shoe. You can see she has the two different ones on there. Most of the professionals have several different slide soles with them, or they wear the shoes, they can change the sole. So there's all sorts of mechanical things that you have to worry about without even considering the release of the ball. Definitely. There's even, uh, players have different right shoes also, with different gripping power for pushing off into their slide. See that arm brace Wendy's wearing? She had uh, surgery uh, last year. 
took off a good part, I think six weeks, missed about six tournaments, and she's having trouble with it now also. But she said she's bowling so well right now, she cannot take off. Hmm. She's having some difficulty over there. Trailing by 11, this frame won't help much. In fact, uh, Wendy finished fourth here at this tournament last year. I'm sure she, she, well, she told us early in the swing that she feels very strong on the back half of the fall swing. It's heading back towards her hometown, back towards Las Vegas in the Samstown Major. And so she picks up a second consecutive spare. Championship match continues. Wendy McPherson Papanos and Kim Adler. Who's going to win the big paycheck? We'll find out as action continues. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Lady Ebonite Classic. John Neighbor and Jan Schmidt as we watch Wendy Papanos pulling to within two pins with her strike in the seventh. And the strike she had in the seventh was light. Um, and now she comes high. She's just really struggling here, doesn't know what to do. She's making subtle moves out there. Wendy wants to mention congratulations to her sister Blair and her husband Kevin. Blair is pregnant. She said it's the best news their family has had in a long time. Oh my goodness. We are seeing some remarkable misses in this championship match. Second open for Wendy. Kim had a 13-pin lead before the last commercial, and uh, she just needed to pick this one up to hold on to that lead in the sixth frame. And it looks like she has it all the way, John. Look how it slides off. The pin actually jumps up. She thinks she has it now. She realizes it's going to continue to slide. That was the second 10-pin in a row she had missed. And she count, comes right back with two consecutive strikes. Most recently in the eighth frame right there. And that's where you really see the professionals, John, an amateur that would really shake them up. Professionals come right back. It actually makes you want it more because you're so angry and you don't want to have to live with the fact that that cost you a title. That's a good point. And there's somebody who's living with that fact right now. Two opens. Both on single pins. Ooh. It's a bad count. Yeah. Sending that ball a little farther right, catching that conditioner that's on the right, on the left, the left lane when she sends it right. There's like an out-of-bounds area. Well, we said early in the show, this has been a, a peculiar house. It's been hard to read, conditions hard to predict. Each lane very different. Uh, that's due to the lane conditioning. There's, there's many factors. Um, the age of the lanes, I know. Kim told me she keeps a notebook from year to year. She started here last year. She looked back in her notes and re remembered that lanes 41 through 60 were new newer in this house. Therefore, they're going to play different because of the age of the lanes. So there's a lot of things to consider. Nice. Nice grasp as you watch Bill Supper, the vice president of Ebonite, our title sponsor this week. Glad to have you in the house, Bill. And now let's see how Wendy responds. Adler gets that spare in the foundation frame right here. Now watch. I'm sure Kim was worried here. It looks like this ball was going to take off just catching the head pin. Watch her face. Does she think it's going to go? Those eyes are getting uh, real big. Oh, relief. Wendy bowling on an open frame. Oh, my goodness. Having no good fortune at all on lane 52. Actually, she did get a strike the last time she bowled on it, but it's not been a good lane for her. Three Rivers Open, her last title, her third of the year. Actually, neither lane's been good for Wendy right now. She's really struggling. Obviously, they're not playing the same as they did for her during the week. If she were to strike out, though, she could still force Kim to mark. A possible 182. Kim's going at a 192 pace, so she would still need the mark if Wendy were to get all three, but pin count would be real important. Needs the strike. Needs three in a row. She gets number one. She needs the next two. 
You know, Wendy was top seed. She bowled well, had the second high average this week, but was top seed because of her match is 24 and 8. Mm. That's, that's a great record right now. She just needs to win one more. open by a crack, if not fully ajar. Well, she needs at least nine pins on this ball to force Kim to mark. If she would get less than nine, then a nine count could win it for Kim. And Kim has already thrown two opens in the championship match. about delivering under pressure 182 to score to beat Adler needs to mark that just came out of nowhere John she had not struck on that lane she more strikes in the 10th than the prior nine frames in Pittsburgh all Adler needed was a mark to beat Wendy she washed out in Pittsburgh There's the jump, boy. And there's your title. Tommy's a happy dad. Dad to be, I should say. Kim Adler victorious for the first time ever, winning from the number five position, and it's an $11,000 payday. We'll be back to talk with the champion. Stick around. Congratulations to Kim Adler, the champion of the Lady Ebonite Classic. Kim, it was quite a match. I am so happy. Um, thank you to Ebonite for sponsoring our tournament and to the Super Bowl staff here. They put on a great tournament and I hope we come back next year. And what are your plans for the riches tonight? Well, my husband Tommy gets a leather recliner massage chair. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, well deserved. Kim Adler climbing the ladder from the number five position. They'll continue with the tour next week as it heads off to the headquarters of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour, Rockford, Illinois, for the Hammer Players Championship. Stay with us because later on ESPN, it's NBA Today. On behalf of my partner, Jim Schnitt, I'm John Neighbor saying thanks a lot for joining us. So long.